What's up everybody, welcome to John's Daily Hustle. So in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to make a garage tool organizer just like this. Or a garden tool organizer, whatever you want to call it. Just like this, it's really easy and it's a do it yourself. Let's jump into this. Alright, so I got two 2 by 8s They were at Menards on the uh, Value Wood section. I think they were like $2.80 a piece or something like that. I wanted 2 by 6 but a 2 by 8 will work just fine. So, I also got an inch and three quarter hole saw, which is what I've got marked out here. So the way I've done it, I went two inches off of the back to the center. So it'll be a little, little less than two inches after the hole is cut, which I may actually move it over that way just a little bit, but I'll update you guys on that if I do. Anyways, then after that, um, as you can see, I kind of made a couple of different lines here. Pretty much what I did was I just took a ruler, a straight edge or whatever, and I lined it up with the bottom of the hole and I just tried to get that right angle that I wanted because you got to think it's going to sit on the wall right here so it's going to be at that angle. So you just really want it on an angle to where your tools don't roll off so you don't want it you know obviously aimed down like that. I don't really know what the degree is there but after I got the top one marked to what I liked which you can see that's the line and then this is the line. After I got the top one marked to the angle that I liked and then I got the bottom one to try and keep it somewhat uniform. You know, I measured, uh, there you go. You can see five inches from there to there. And then I kind of went down the line and just went, you know, five, that one's almost five and a half. It's not real scientific. Um, it's not gonna be, you know, completely accurate and that's okay. So I'm gonna set this camera up. I'm gonna drill these out. I'm gonna drill the holes and then I'm gonna get the saws all because, you know, I'm cheap and that's all I got is the saws all, cheap saws all. And then I'm going to cut it. And then after I do that, I'm actually going to lay that board on top or on bottom. And then take a marker and just trace these out. But I'll show you guys the way just to where that one will match specifically with this one. Alright, so for this next few parts, I wanted to speed this up so you don't get completely bored with watching me drill through the wood. I do recommend using some kind of dust collector. As you can see here, I use my shop vac to collect the dust. Because it does get in your lungs and irritate you pretty good with the fine particles. And here you can see, I just wanted to show a close-up of how well it actually does work and sucks in the, at least the fine particles anyway. It will still leave a mess, so just keep that in mind depending on where you're making this. Alright, so now I just flipped it over the other way and I'm going to finish drilling through. I just flipped it over to where I didn't drill all the way through into the table, which you could have started it this way if you really wanted to. I just did it that way so it was more stable. So this next part can be the tedious part where you're just drilling in and then having to get the wood pieces out. Sometimes it can be a pain when they kind of expand inside that little bit there. If you've ever done any kind of hole drilling, hole saw drilling, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But it goes through pretty easily though. This is actually probably the easier part of doing this. For me, the hard part was actually cutting it with the sawzall, which you guys will see here real soon. We got all 12 holes drilled out. Now, I'm going to try and set this up some way. I might have to use the vise here or something. So I can get a good angle on it. Yeah, I could probably do it just like that with the sozo. But anyways, I'm going to set this up somehow. And we're going to start drilling out the first one. Just to give it a try and see how easy it goes. From this angle, it looks like I'm getting ready to put my hand right underneath the blade. But as you can see right there, it's actually far enough away from it. So don't comment that I'm about to cut my hand off on that. I didn't realize it looked like that. it was that close until I started editing this video. But I can promise you guys, I was trying to be as safe as I can doing this. So far, it's going alright. You guys can kind of see there. So I'm going to turn on the vacuum and we're going to get to cutting and time lapse. As you guys can see here, I did go end up getting a jigsaw, which worked way better than using the sawzall. Much like lawn care, it's always more efficient, faster, and safer to just use the right equipment for the right job. So this was one of those things where I had to buy that, and it went so much easier. I highly recommend you do too. So when you guys are getting your wood, don't be a bonehead like me. As you can see, it was split. Alright, so I got the first one done. As you can see, I made a mistake. So what I had said earlier, when you get in your wood, make sure that it's not cracked down the middle. So I had to put a screw in quite a few of these to keep them from breaking. However, it didn't stop this one, but that's okay. So what I did here is I just cut that flat because I'm actually going to put, you know, my screws into here when I mount it to the wall over there. So I'm going to 
put that one up here, lay that one on top, trace them out and cut it. And I'll show you how I'm gonna mount them after that. So there is the finished product with all the, you know, all my tools up on it and everything. So it actually turned out pretty good for the first one and considering the few mistakes I made, but you guys can see it. it holds it pretty strong, pretty sturdy. But as you can see, I have a lot more room for more tools I could put on there. I did put my hooks back up, but anyways, just wanted to show you guys that. It's pretty simple, easy to do. It'll probably take you about two hours or less if you have all the right tools and know what you're doing. So to mount it to the wall, I did end up also buying this nice little angle here, as you can see. It's a, just a little 90 degree angle. And as you guys can see, I, I overkilled it with my lag bolts here. So I filmed the studs in the wall and I put the lag bolts through it like that and up here. So it's more than strong enough to hold. And I actually did that there on all four corners and up there and right there as well. Right up here, it was a little, little sketchy because the way I made it, I didn't really take into consideration this angle bracket here. So some of the screws came through, but that's okay. But as I said, you know, it has essentially six bolts on every corner of this holding it up. So it's more than sturdy. And as you guys can see, I have, well, a lot more equipment on here than I did even back when I first made this video. So if you guys have any advice on how to make this better than what I did and don't take into consideration my bonehead mistakes of buying split wood to begin with, but if you guys have any other, you know, alternate designs that you think would work better for somebody, please comment it below because I want to learn it too because I'll probably end up remaking these at some point to where it just looks better. But anyways, please give this video a big thumbs up because it was kind of a pain in the butt to edit as I've had a lot of technical difficulties editing this. Please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe because you'll see a lot more stuff just like this in later videos. A lot to do it yourself. I think the next fabrication thing that I do is I'm probably going to make a grass catcher for my zero turn mower. At least I'm going to try to anyway. So be sure to subscribe if you want other do it yourself tips and tricks like that. And as always, thanks for watching guys.